Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well. Thank you very much for tuning in to today's episode here at The Aquarium Project. Um, if you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. I hate asking, but my research tells me that it's what I'm supposed to do, so I will do it. But let's jump right into the video, eh? The main video. So these bad boys here is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, this is the Golden Pothos, but I'm going to be mainly using the Golden Pothos, but it, the same rule kind of applies to any of the Pothos varieties. You can get all different colors and like patterns and stuff, but I just have Golden around, so it's the easiest for me to show you. But we're going to be talking about this plant here. It's one of the ones that gets mentioned a lot um, when people come into the shop, like asking questions about. So we're going to be talking about it. What I like to do, and what's real, real awesome, is growing it out the back of the tank, like this. So, we're going to kind of talk about a little bit about why, but also give you some information about how to do it if you're wanting to, wanting to get yourself going with, with growing some pothos. So, the best part about growing them out of the back of the tank is what it does is as it grows, it will use nutrients out of the tank as essentially as fertilizer so your nitrates and phosphates and that essentially it'll use it as fertilizer to fuel its growth so what you'll get is it will grow faster and grow happily and then what it will do is it will basically suck some of the waste out of the tank um a lot of plants will do it like we've got for example here's the monstera adansonii um the peacelies the what else can you use you can use um, monstera minima um lucky bamboo like all sorts of different plants but we're going to be talking about how if you want to do it how to get started with the pothos so yeah hopefully hopefully i think it's one that like a lot of people should do because i mean even regardless of like helping keep the water cleaner it just looks so awesome and i think the best part about it is it really kind of adds that sort of nature feeling and like makes it feel like the whole sort of your tank is more than just like what's inside the box you know it like really adds some some kind of a, a, a bit of a jungle type of vibe to the aquarium um and keeping you're keeping african cichlids you're keeping uh big americans keeping a high-tech planted tank keeping a bunch of goldfish whatever it gives a really cool look to your entire tank and like fills it out really nicely and adds a bit of warmth to the room so if you're a person who's have, who has this plant growing at home and you want to take some of it out of the plant pot and put it in your aquarium, what's the, what's the steps that you'll need to take to make sure that this does well for you? So what we'll see here is you can see kind of like where the leaf grows out is called a node, but it's like I always think of it as like a knuckle. Um, so what you want to do is like cut, cut there and then cut there like on either side with a little bit of the stem, like you don't want to cut right up against it. Leave a bit of the stem. And then what you want to do is put it like on your bench or something and leave it for like a long time, like maybe like a day. You want to leave it just sitting there for a day. Um, and the reason for that is what it's going to do is it's going to what's called callus over, which is on the end where you cut it, it's obviously going to be moist. And if you put that straight into your aquarium, what's most likely going to happen is it's going to rot um, because basically all the water's going to get in and the whole thing's going to die. And we're wanting to avoid that. So what you want to do is let it callus over and let it sit for like a day. Your leaf might get a little bit kind of sad looking, but that'll be fine. A day's not going to kill it. And then what you want to do is, it depends how you want to do it. Hang on back, filter, and like jam them in there or just like dangle them into the water, whatever. Um, and let them grow. What you will find, oh, a new like a new little leaf, it'll just kind of look like a little spike at first, and then it will grow and grow and grow and grow. Um, so that's happening. This is a monstera, but it's like same idea. It's like it's putting out this little spike here. If it shows it. Um, the only thing you want to do is make sure that that spike isn't like underwater. If it's underwater, that uh, leaf is just going to rot, and again, things are going to die. But what you want to do is like put that spike. Whoa! I must drop my phone. Put that spike above the water and keep it like dry and it will keep growing. What I find a lot of people sort of have trouble with when trying to do these, growing these plants, is you don't notice much of a difference at first, so you kind of give up. Um, the thing, not going to make much of a difference, like if it's got like four or five leaves or something, even less, 
it's not really going to do anything in terms of like the make a tangible difference on the nutrients like it'll look cool and everything it'll be fun but it's not gonna make a tangible difference on the nutrients it's only when they start getting a bit bigger that they really have a noticeable impact on the like for example how much you have to water change or how fast your nitrates are increasing and all that kind of thing so i think the main part is just to be patient with it um you really want to like give it a chance to like really get big and take some some of the work out of it um the other thing as well i wanted to say is you don't want to sort of forget about doing your water changes even when it's big as we've discussed previously there's still other reasons you do water changes other than just removing the nitrates so making sure that you keep up with it is important because there's even like micronutrients in that that's going to be of value to the plants themselves so if you forget about it it's going to cause it to be, have a lot more trouble growing so making sure you do your water changes is really important the best thing though is i always i really like it just i uh, i can't get over how nice it looks like value is so understate uh underestimated um the only thing as well is you, there is a little bit of care that you might want to put in when thinking about the roots of the plants so if we go back to jeremy's oscar tank down here there's these big roots and there's a few things you might want to consider so if you have a smaller tank you obviously might need to trim those back if they get too big and kind of take over the whole tank the problem with that though is the plant can't if you if your plant's too big and you trim off all the roots it's going to die so if when it, when it's getting big you might want to trim it off like the the roots but then also trim off like cut cut down the vine essentially so then it can keep up with the root mass that's available to it that's going to end up with a much more healthy plant in general what you can do is you know just get like five smaller plants in one tank instead of one massive one because then your roots aren't going to be as big the only as you can see here it's got all this little gunk and stuff stuck in it but that'll be fine if that just give it a swish around like when you're doing water changes and that like with your hand just give it a shake and that'll kind of shake off all the little bits of like detritus and like food and like dead leaves and like all this other junk that gets caught in it but yeah that's kind of the only things really to think about and then yeah i just think that the aesthetic value is so understated like it really does make a tank look awesome just having this this explosion of plants out the top particularly if it's like an african cichlid tank or like an american cichlid tank where there's not that much plant mass on the inside of the tank because the thing i find is actually the contrast is really really cool like it makes it look so nice having that contrast of like heaps of plants and then like no plants and yeah but i guess it's just personal preference in the end um so yeah I hope that has given you guys a bit of bit of a, in, more information about different types of pothos and stuff that how you can maybe look at it. Um, the other good thing as well, sorry, just while I forget about it, is it, it's not going to make you tons of money, but if this plant's just growing crazy, you can take those little cuttings, root them, and then like sell them to other fish keepers or to like houseplant people, and you won't make tons of money, but enough to support your hobby you know enough to buy some fish food some new fish some new plants all this kind of thing so i'm very much a big believer that like pretty much every tank should have some pothos growing out of it you'll get so much out of it and i've yet to meet anyone who has given it a go and then after they've given it a go decided oh, i actually hate this everyone's like this is so cool i should have done this from the very beginning i can't believe i've missed all this opportunity so yeah make sure to let me know what you guys think down below i'd really urge you to get, give it a go um if you don't have any cuttings what you can do is like just ask on local facebook groups um you can often buy them from like the plant shops um but yeah it's it's relatively easy to get so yeah thank you guys very much for watching and i'll talk to you later see ya